This is 4.0 industry panel and this is quite a tough topic, a new one and uh, at the opening session you've heard about it about 4 15 times transformation, realization, industry and transformation of different types of companies. I will be launching this panel. My name is Alexey Sherbatenko. Uh, while my presentation is being put onto the screen, I would like to tell you in a nutshell what digital transformation is, what digital I transformation is. And frankly speaking, Vasily Ivanovich has told a lot about robots, about uh, Victoria Tegipko also has spoken a lot about the ways to transform a company to become more IT savvy. I will also show you my point of view at Industry 4.0, what this is, and uh, I would also like to speak about USA and China, because there is a technological leader fighting between those countries to become a leader in the field. So. And uh, let me tell you something about myself. My name is Alexey Sherbatenko. I'm 34 and uh, I'm married. I have two children and for 10 years I've been working in the coolest technology company which uh, implements and transforms industrial companies. So there are 500 people employed. So the company is 34 years old. I'm 34 years old. So. Uh, it wasn't found uh, one founded when I was born, but around the same time we conduct 870 projects all over the world and uh, our team does it in 15 countries of the world and, uh, and in, in Dubai in on the island Isle of Man and this year we've signed several contracts in Egypt but people don't like going my people don't like going there when it's hot but it's a nice place uh, speaking in more detail I uh, we do it with the help of, uh, or due to, with the help of modern technologies and standards, you're probably well aware of. And for the upcoming four hours, I'll be telling about each and every one of that ERP, MRP2, RCM2, RCM APS. So these are all in industry 3.0 standards. And uh, there are many companies uh, uh, this, uh, heading for industry 4.0. This is, these are the technologies that we use predictive maintenance, digital twin, artificial intelligence, machine learning, machine vision, VR, AR, and industrial internet of things. So within the framework of this, this is the ecosystem of industry 4.0 and the standards of 4.0. As I've told you before, though we produce some basic stuff within the framework of our system, we're heading for the smart factory, and this is that charm with the help of which we are moving everything ahead. We do it. Uh, so there are some Ukrainian companies who we make it all for. These are different metal producing companies, telecom, different companies, and uh, over 34 years of history we've allocated, we've uh, singled out several segments. We've checked the level, uh, the level of each and every company, industrial company, from the point of view of management and development with the help of technologies. Uh, there are analog companies which uh, we think, uh, in which process we think uh, is virtual, uh, speaking about management. So these are the tools that the analog companies have got, paper, Excel, there are companies which uh, have advanced uh, considerably, which have done their homework and we call these companies, uh, they did, did the basics and they did some homework and they implemented accounting, uh, HRM, CRM and they over to Tayr and these are the companies that are on a different level of management and uh, they use big analytic database to make the right managerial decisions but the coolest top companies are the ones that start in 2014 in using industry 4.0 and those are the in uh, tools that we live now those are the tools of digital factory we're speaking more about industrial company uh, artificial intelligence digital twin our ar vr machine learning machine vision predictive maintenance and industrial internet of things so these are the companies that are are getting on to the online management level and in the majority of the cases artificial intelligi intelligence does help to and help them to process the managerial decisions so our let's take a look at the evolution uh, let me let me 
speak about the two countries, the USA and, and the People's Republic of China. How come there are these two countries that I'm going to talk about? And uh, the world is, uh, has done a lot, has advanced a lot, the world has changed, the world has become faster, more technology oriented and more demanding. And currently, competition, global competition of the countries in the world is happening not only with the help of the arms and weapons, but also with the help of uh, technology. The USA and the People's Republic of China are currently competing to be the first in the world, to be the leaders in the world. Let me tell you a little bit, uh, Industry 4.0 didn't come out of the blue, and uh, due or against uh, the will, uh, the clients are much more client-oriented and more demanding, and China centralized its production and uh, took lots of the production lines and uh, lots of with a lot of companies which now produce in China because the labor force is cheap and in reply to that action Europe and the United States of America uh, pr produced this industry 4.0 with the help of this uh, industry 4.0 helped artificial intelligence develop, which in its turn moving people less uh, production. No, m people less production is currently going into the digital twins and based on this, companies and people, uh, so in the, the human factor currently is no longer that much important than it used to be because artificial intelligence, digital twins uh, mitigate, minimize the human factor and based on that the United States of America, Europe uh, are bringing back their production lines back to to, the, uh, to where they used to be using industry 4.0 thus decreasing the price of the labor force so the current objective is to minimize, uh, reduce the cost of, for the labor force and the self cost when we talk about high tech companies which are returning back to the United States and Europe uh, after staying in China is different, the self cost actually actually plays a great role here and uh, and uh, if there are production company if you're part of that company and you don't you're not paying attention at that to more of the companies that are looking five to ten years ahead of what we have now they will far you will be far behind them and during the majority of forms and uh, People ask who introduced Serum, everybody starts uploading. No, this is the homework that should have done yesterday. We should do it right now. But if you hadn't done that homework, you will never get onto a different level. But technologies are currently different. Industry 3.0 before 2005, those are robots that are spoken a lot about and uh, people less production but this is 3.0 no industry this is popular now but uh, before 2005 it had been popular the ERP systems that were selling these are industry 3.0 SCADA permission and so on and so for industry 4.0 uh, digital twins AI MIMV WRAR and predictive maintenance, so you predict if the equipment breaks down. So these these are new realities that some of the companies have already been using since 2014. These are these are new trends, the latest trends. And this is what we have. Using modern technologies in the new world, we are able to uh, work, produce faster, 25%, and the technologies are 30% cheaper. Let me give a simple example to you. Somebody who somebody is using in the operational, who uses dashboards in his or her operational activities? Raise your hand. Good. But what are the parameters that you have on your dashboard? 5, 10, 100? 10. And uh, with the, in s the majority of the companies, if you've made your home, if you've done your homework and you have very good system, you still process or you can generate 10, 100, 1000, thousands of parameters. But as of now, I'm definite that processing them with good quality is not good. And good quality means that in real life they should help you manage the process and respond to the process. Industry 4.0 came up uh, with AI which can help a human being and tell him which is good, which is not, uh, build up certain consequences. Uh, 
and uh, with the help of the very BI, VI we are able of pro to process in lots of parameters and help production company predict when the when an equipment will break down or will be taken out of uh, use for a brief period of time this is important so let me show you yet another case and uh, we work with factories and production plants but one of the criteria of a factory and measuring of efficiency of a factory is the OEE overall equipment effectiveness which consists of the multiplicator of the availability plus performance and plus quality if you multiply all those four parameters, we see that the overall efficiency of equipment, if you are a factory, and affordability, if you have the percentage of affordability is 82, the production is 82 percent, the percentage of quality that you attain at the production line 82 percent, that means that your factory is is 55 percent efficient. This means that uh, right next to this. There's a hidden factory which doesn't work and losses 45% of efficiency, loses 45% of efficiency. This, and we've got lots of cases and company owners approach us and say, good, what shall we do? We will put yet another equipment yet, or we'll buy another production line. Some do, but this makes things even worse because there will be even more equipment and the theory of limit of bottlenecks will become even narrower and uh, the figures will decrease eventually. And that's why in our projects we try to squeeze as much as we can from what is there by increasing the current factory load from 55%, 60%, 70%. And then if we see that there are some bottlenecks, we help. Uh, will help help them to do to develop and to introduce some new equipment if there's a need for that. But now, let me boast some achievements of ours. Interpipe will speak about it. I'm not going to talk about Interpipe because this is a big international company with the help of Industry 4.0 and some industrial stuff. Increasing of the OEEs plus 15% is what they've experienced. The control of the delivery dates on online, uh, the reduction of the unwrapped production, the delivering on time, the reduction of maintenance. So those are the figures, the cool stuff with the help of which we're driving the business. We like uh, being said these type of tasks by our clients. And you will probably say Interpipe is a big company, it was well, it does 10,000, thousands of people, but there's also a fat aviation company. We started working with them. It, it only had 200 people now, and they have 800 people. This is the digital twin working in the airspace sector. This is a digital twin and uh, this is a uh, machine building company, it controls online the uh, load for each and every piece of equipment. This is a 3D camera at the land, people are chewing, walking around, chewing some food and the digital twin sees which current operation is taking place, which is stop, who we produce something for and uh, this is again, these are digital factories and we reduce the human factor and we use industry 4.0 in the modern world. Why we need this we need this to attain the objectives that we set and uh, so we see that the company matches the modern predictive uh, uh, demands so this is the company that works for example with Pratt and Whitney no one says that you shouldn't do homework everybody says that guys industry 4.0 helps move faster with better quality and be more competitive on the international market now, going back to the USA and China, this is my main message. Uh, if uh, te technology, technology developed country are fighting to be the leaders on the world, uh, leader of technologies, I think w it's about time that we th think about this. We, the owners of the companies, the bosses of the company, the heads of the company, we probably have got to be at least within the trends, so if not ahead of everyone. We need to do some homework, but Industry 4.0 helps you to get transformed 
transform and get onto the new level of development. Thank you very much. I guess I have had my time done. Now Astarte is the next company to go on. Good afternoon, colleagues. Good afternoon, the participants of this remarkable conference or summit, if you like. Which button shall I press? I would like to share with you about perhaps things which are not of IT order at all. The land, sugar, wheat, soybeans. These are the things that actually we use in our everyday mundane line, life, and these are uh, part of the processes, processed foods, different kinds of uh, food that we use for our everyday needs. There may be also some innovations introduced. Can there be there? It's a difficult question. Let me give you a couple of statistics. Back in 2018, it argued that the level of penetration of digitization in the United States was at 28 percent. In Europe, at the same time, it was 16 to 18 percent. In China, it was at the level of 9 to 10 percent. China, which is a huge agrarian territory with the huge territories of agricultural land. Ukraine wasn't represented in that rating at all, unfortunately. Does it mean that in the agrarian sector, agrarian production, that is to say the production of foods and processing of these foods in technological lines for sugar production, for elevators, does it mean that IT element is completely unnecessary, no innovations are wanted? This doesn't mean a thing, it doesn't mean like that. I will represent to you one of the cases that we are using in our everyday work. But prior to that, let me tell you a few words about the company that I work for. First of all, Astarta is an agrarian holding which represents several diverse manufacturing facilities. It's responsible for 220,000 hectares of land in Ukraine. These are sugar production facilities and our company is number one sugar producer for Ukraine. These are several elevators that process a great number of different uh, foods. It's wheat, corn, soybeans, uh, sunflower seeds. This is the company that also has a well sufficiently developed system of farms and we have a lot of cattle. Our cows are placed in these farms. There are about 40 such farms across the full board of Ukraine, and we are number one supplier of industrial milk in Ukraine. What does it mean? The milk, which is used for the production of chocolate. I'm not going to name the brand names in order to produce any kind of advertising here, but for the production of a very famous brand name, also in fast food chains, all of them they use the milk produced by Astarta. It's also important to mention that the company is really open, public, 15 years ago. Recently, we, uh, 15 years ago, we launched our initial IPO in Warsaw stock exchange and the company is rather responsible <coughs> we believe that we have contributed a lot to the ukrainian economy significantly due to the social activities that we are responsible for not in kiev in kiev we only have the hq but the bulk of the business is done in Baltava, Khmelnytsk and, Re um, and the Khmelnytsk regions of ukraine in the fields it's where our production and produce is grown what is the purpose of innovating in agrarian sector? I can see some trends that we have to follow and pursue in order to just to approximate the numbers which I have already mentioned in terms of involving, involving the level of digitization in various countries across the board of different companies where we are headed. Artificial intelligence 
and robotics, excluding the human factor in the production process. This is exceptionally important to make sure that the level of production that we have, the operations that we maintain within our company, in our sugar production facility or in the plant that uh, processes soybeans or at elevators, we need to make sure that this chain has to exclude the human factor to the best of our ability. Why? Because we will eliminate mistakes. We will eliminate deviations in the business processes from the nominal flow, which needs to be guaranteed. The Internet of Things. Even in the olden days, prior to digitization, there were options when, in one or another way, in some ways, we had to come up with our own ideas, to come up with some contraptions and devices, and we would get different kinds of data, com boards, different kinds of difficult uh, old ports. Let us call it just a zero version of the Internet of Things. When we were able to obtain smart units in the production processes that enabled us to obtain the information necessary for decision-making processes, virtual re reality and augmented reality. These are the technologies that allow us to use people where we cannot use mechanisms for the time being, to use people, as I say, to employ them, but the people that do not need a lot of special uh, training, qualified training. You don't have to require any engineering skills from them. We just show them a particular image. We make an imitation of virtual reality for a particular component in the production line. And the people who are not very highly qualified, according to the instructions that they get via the virtual reality, via the imagery of the component that they have to deal with, have an opportunity to perform a particular function, big data. <coughs> We work a lot on making sure that the huge amount of data that we obtain, starting with the indicators of our production lines and all the way to the temperature indicators in the fields uh, that we operate in throughout a long period of time, it all needs to be aggregated and analyzed in order to build certain models of how we can predict, forecast, how the weather may affect or a particular structure or a combination of different factors may affect the production of crops. The project that we have piloted very successfully in one of our production lines together with IT Enterprise Company is the project which allows us to see and have a great um, detailed look in the area of technological maintenance, maintenance of uh, production lines, maintenance of our production, generally speaking, and the proper digital um, maintenance and repair. Why is it important for us? Perhaps repair management seems to be like a huge iceberg to many, when the essence of what remains within the maintenance and repair means not only costs, costs for the repair and maintenance of the blocks and components, different spare parts, but additionally it also implies a great number of different additional factors, additional costs. It's just like payments or payroll for the specialists and their services, organizational uh, needs, um, waste and scrap, etc. As a result of implementing this project, we have achieved several very significant objectives by implementing the um, this system we managed to in our piloted facility as I have mentioned to reduce costs for repair reduce costs for maintenance because we invest we enter into the system the business process the production line for the unbundling of all of the components. And it shows us immediately that a particular business operation or maintenance work or repair work will have to come at a time which is uh, distinctly 
forecast by the system. That is to say, we specifically will know that in October, let's say 2021, line number one and line number two will have to undergo certain technological maintenance works, certain planned intrusions, replacements, um, and all of this can be projected and all of this can be accounted for in our expenses for our business processes. Among the nine enterprises of the business, which right now is operational, one is fully launched, as I have said, and eight are working too, they are operational now. And we have undertaken a great deal of work. We have created a great number of technical jobs. I'm not going to repeat myself. All of the previous information are the information that you can find in our slides. We have also created a great number of different um, modules of different unbundling of components. And we have also b been able to look into a great number of different aggregates in our soybean production and elevators. And therefore, we achieved the models for the equipment and the groups of equipment that we require in order to manage uh, their maintenance and repair works appropriately. Digital twin. These are the real shots, snapshots of our, one of our sugar production plants, one of the production lines in this sugar production facility where every detail and every component within the system is equipped accordingly with the code. We can uh, read it, we can get the information about the disbundling, unbundling of these components. We can see where this component is placed in the line, when and how it should be maintained, and any other necessary information that the engineers in our facility use in their real everyday life in real cases in order to manage these processes. Visualized part. That's something I mentioned and alluded to before. Again, we show visually as much as we can the way that a particular spare part should look like, a technical spare part of a particular production line where it belongs and in what way and what kind of manipulations are absolutely necessary for us to repair, to maintain, or to perform different operations which are part of the regulatory documents and to bring it into the full functional working order. Another important factor it's the employment of the system in places. Our engineers go work with uh, carrying their mobile devices. And we have the mobile uh, application, the mobile version of the whole system in, in these mobile applications. And this mobile application enables us to get the statuses of uh, a particular technological situation or a state and what needs to be done in the production line in what way and when technological maintenance needs to be done and we try uh, to make sure that all of this information is never reproduced on paper everything is digitalized everything is represented there via on the mobile application Digital processes that I have alluded to are important for us, maybe even vital, because even in one pilot manufacturing facility that we have already launched the system in is really indicative for us, because in many ways we have achieved the full um, prognostication predictability of how we can maintain as well as repair the systems within that production facility. And when my colleague Alexei was showing his lines to you when we spoke about phase one, phase two, transformational phase, it's true, this part, which is called technical maintenance and repair works, is like part of our homework. And in this part, right now we are at the stage of homework, but due to the solution that we have obtained of IT enterprise, which is our partner, 
In many ways, we can say that we have already jumped into the third stage of, of our development of uh, the Industrial Revolution for Zero that Alexei has just showed you, because we have been able to touch upon predictive maintenance, we have touched upon virtual reality, we have been able to create, recreate the visualization of the components and mechanisms that we do use in our everyday life, in our uh, real facilities, and in one, in one, with one foot we are already there in the digital transformation. The way we use industrial Internet of Things, we get connected to our unbundling systems and we get different data through different sensors. We accumulate all of this in our special system IT enterprise and we um, allow our engineers to analyze all of that data. It's important also to mention at this point that if we mention AI, it needs to be underscored that for us it's vital to exclude the human factor and exclude the possible mistakes, eliminate different kinds of inaccuracies that human beings unfortunately can commit in production processes and finally achieve the predictivity and prognostication of how a particular mechanism or a component will be able to behave, something that we would never be able to achieve if we used old systems and accounting processes for the necessity to maintain and repair our components according to the old system that we used to have in place. A couple of words to complete my presentation. Maybe as a kind of a wish for digital transformation, industrial transformation, industrial autom automation, digitization, you must make sure you understand why that or this or that particular kind of digitization is necessary, how to calculate the economic effect or upshot that you're going to obtain after you implement a particular technology. It's important that all of this hype that we get to hear around Industry 4.0 and uh, digitization, we need to ensure that we understand how to apply it in our businesses and how we can digitalize it and show it via um, real numbers. In my understanding, this is the most important conclusion that we can obtain from dig digitization of a company. Thank you very much for your attention. Good afternoon. Intro by Sergei Sayevich. We got 15 minutes. I will tell you briefly. I will share my experience on how we use the industry for zero technology in our company and what objectives we have, what results we have, which challenges we have had, and the process is an un is everlasting. I'll tell you about the results and I will tell you about our future, our goals. A few words about the company. Interpipe is a 100% Ukrainian industrial company, five largest factories in Dnipropetrovsk Oblast, 82% of our produce is export. We export it outside of Ukraine. We got clients in 70 different largest countries of the world. Those are the, com those are the companies, if you take a look at the slide, are world-renowned leaders in oil extraction. They build skyscrapers, they build bridges. And the second uh, thing that we're after, we produce uh, steel pipes and railway stock wheels. And if we talk about pipes, we're top 10, we're a top 10 world uh, seamless pipe exporters and we're top three railway wheel producers, 60% of all the railway stock use wheels that we produce pipes every third building in Dubai you know this place is developing very fast lots of money is invested so these are every third building in Dubai use in every third building in Dubai there are the tubes that we produce pipes that we produce 
And uh, this is what we've been doing, this is how we've been developing, and this is how we've been structuring our development, because we're this is a big company, we've got a vertical integrated company in addition to industrial company, there are lots of auxiliary productions all over the world, there's a network of commercial representative offices, and uh, we're self-sufficient, starting with the procurement of metal all the way to the delivery of the produced goods. And some of the warranties that we produce is life, is uh, the, 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 the warranty that uh, lasts for the duration of life. So there are several blocks, and uh, the one is for the industrial company that's important is the production. So we do a lot when developing our production activities, automatization, application of standards of Industry 4.0 sales because production should be connected to the sales and these are the markets and we should be guided not by the producing what we produce but what the client actually needs and wants finances, accounting, efficiency, controlling of all the processes, the treasury is the payment factory allowing us to manage our finances all over the world. The, ten, the bidding platform, we were the first to launch a ten bidding process and all the processes of procurement are currently at our bidding platform. We've systematized it all, made it uh, match in the uh, legislation, we keep an account and we invest a lot into our developing our services for the staff because the production is an indispensable part. Uh, we're talking not only about uh, the industry will talk also talk about people who use that uh, those different techniques uh, we've spoken about Tair we've done that Tair in, uh, with regards to all our assets but having launched the repairment management system we have uh, with this but uh, again there are new opportunities and there are new needs definitely and we are developing and we use I, I will show you briefly a uh, new technology based on the systems that we have already launched. Procurement, this is one of the component of an effective industrial company. This is how we got here. Interpipe uh, is very experienced in the field. We started way back in the Soviet Union times and we talk about the factories that were built back then and they produced a lot. but. But we've faced the change, challenges of 2014, the markets changed, we need to change not only the way we produce, but the entire logic of the, of the business. And in fact, uh, having left the markets uh, because of certain reasons, you probably know where we left the markets of the CIS countries, we run into a need to of selling our produce on the European markets and uh, the markets of America. So there are different demands, there are different requirements and different type of uh, products. And they have special demands, not only with regards to what's produced, but also the packaging and the delivery date and the support and the rigid r requirements with regards to the quality of the produce. The competition is harsh. We started at the market, which has already been occupied by the world known players. The products are personalized. We work for the client in the just time. This is not the warehouse uh, approach that we have. We check out what the client needs and we produce what the client wants. And we have all the parameters and we're well aware of when the goods should be delivered back to the uh, client. And uh, so in fact, uh, we changed the management system in the past. We worked old school type. We had plans, we had to follow the plan, but once we got to the per order uh, production management, we ha we changed the management of our the way we managed our portfolio. This is what it means. Even if it's a small order, two tons or three tons, it's as significant as a bigger order of hundreds tons and because a demanding client if you mess with a client uh, with pro or order for a client that client will no longer ask us to deliver what we do to him we'll lose the client so th that's it let me tell you a couple of words about industry for zero why industry for zero what are the benefits that we got 
we had to speed up our processes and launch being launched on the IT markets and the markets who want the produce be produced on time and in small lots which we did and uh, having conducted the reforming of the business making everything automatic making digital twin at our production line we managed to see what there's actually what is going on at every stage of the production line once we've done it all through all the we got oh we went to the co the processing of data there's a lot of data that have to be processed and uh, Alexei showed you the number of reports. You can spend hours and hours building up dashboards, employ lots of people. Sometimes it's good, but you need to match those reports, make the decisions. So we decided to use this type of uh, approach, uh, shifted some of uh, this uh, data, not only gross uh, volume, but uh, so we see the trends and we see what is going on at different part of the production line. We see what is going on with the each and every item. So we decided to be using the in artificial intelligence to manage our processes and to build up the report. And, and there was a challenge, definitely. But the traditional approaches we used to embrace uh, became inefficient. In 2014, for us meant develop or die. If we hadn't changed the markets, if we hadn't started using the industry for zero, our business would have been on the verge of collapse. We started using digital twins, uh, IU technology was also employed by us and uh, we completely started planning not only our, we started the industrial planning and the system started building up its plans per month and now we build pl production, daily production plans so we know who's got to be in charge of what people and what production part and what produce. So now we have uh, everything that we need. We started building up predictions and having launched the entire system, we switched uh, from the opposition purchase of certain components and spare parts. We know ahead of time, three, four months ahead of time, what spare parts should be sent to our client. We know the prices and the quality. We don't have to pay the warehouse because nothing is kept at the warehouses anymore. And uh, so this is a great increase in the efficiency. A couple of words about digital twin and traceability now on each and every stage from the production of all the way to from the production of the component that we used to produce and all the way we, we know everything. We know what uh, what type of uh, metal was used, uh, who produced and what uh, this type of unit and we know the properties of the unit. We knew if there are some questions or issues with the unit, we can show the client not only the good quality properties of the produce, but we can all actually show what actually happened to the unit before it became a product that was sent to the client. So and I told you before we had switched to the new type of managing uh, and I remember we, but we, when we switched to the per order type of management, we had 50 to 60 percent of the fulfillment of the plan in the past. Now we're reaching 90 to 95 percent. There is always room for perfection. There are five percent more to cover, but the gap, uh, but the push was quite hard powerful and efficient uh, a lot of efficiency has been achieved in addition in, uh, so, so we built a digital twin of our warehouse vmas systems have been here for a long time but there are some details that you have to consider in the production line dependent on each part of the factory dependent on the delivery and shipping of the goods that we produce and so we build up the digital warehouse twin uh, meant to help the uh, produces better results several fold so in the past we had trucks at our production line we lost a lot of money but now the delivery the ship and deli ship and delivery happens within one hour since the process is transparent and uh, we've got no problems with the quality if somebody messed up with the uh, shipping lot or delivery is not uh, 
completed, we can actually go back and uh, remediate everything. So this is the digital twin, and again, we so we have the chain of delivery of the goods to the client, and we'd like to show the client in his private cabinet what happens to his order and what which what's happening to each and every lots of products where that product or produce is at so we we visualize we're trying to visualize uh, and show the client the information so the the client knows everything about the or things that he or she has ordered a couple of words about the logistics and uh, well the production producing of tubes uh, pipes uh, this is an industrial company but if you're going on to a new concept the just time concept uh, it's not enough to produce something you've got to deliver it to the clients uh, within the time frame stated by the client ne neither early nor later we need to inform the client we need to plan the shipping and then be monitoring the shipping and the delivery of the product to produce. This is what we build. This is how we use the technology. Uh, when the order is being made at the pre-stage, when the order is made, there's a transport lot, and we are aware that there's information on, on the, the, the delivery date and the name of the client, and we run the bidding process at the bidding platform, defining the company that will deliver our product to the client. And then we know what car, what, what other, rather truck will be at our premises. Once we've got that information, the uh, permits are printed out, trucks uh, coming through the checkpoint, uh, there are special license plate detecting system. So the system detects there's a certain truck with a certain license plate have entered our premises and then we monitor the amount of time that the truck spends at the premises once the truck leaves the premises of the factory uh, we've in implemented gps monitoring clients do not call us anymore they can see with the gps on the map where the truck is at we also put some controlling points customs offices crossing the border uh, that, uh, or and an intermediate status we control everything if the car arrived early or late the system informs our logistic office and we we tell it to the client there might be some breakdowns that happens to the truck or the truck gets stuck at the customs office but the most important is that the client be informed as a ASAP and so that's the private uh, page for each and every client of ours and the transporting company also have their pages here they can participate in the bidding process and uh, they should produce all the necessary documents and uh, we tried and launched without partner this digital ttn so and uh, we didn't have all the mm, laws necessary in ukraine signed but we launched the pilot and uh, we also have a chance to get rid of all the paperwork. Let me tell you a couple of words. So you've seen the slides, uh, you've got the smartphone, you've got the mobile application. And the uh, QR codes are scanned and uh, being at the factory you can see a, a piece of equipment. You can point your smartphone at the piece of equipment and see what piece of equipment that is when it was maintained for the most recent time and then if there's need for the maintenance you can um, file an application then uh, all our um, maintenance people uh, have uh, s smartphones uh, gadgets and uh, they have smart helmet all the information is contained on the monitor that the maintenance people uh, has so uh, with his or her hands free the maintenance person can do whatever work and at the same time read the information about the application that he gets now no more human error we reduce the unfinished uh, produce uh, storages and uh, leftovers and uh, we see that uh, there's a growth more than one third and we also have uh, the online quality control at the production site a few words about uh, uh, let me show you several figures on the maintenance this is what we launched this is what we have uh, lots of parameters that i digested and uh, the uh, maintenance
take a break so you can get your questions ready immediately. We're going to have a panel discussion now. There will be a couple more speakers during this panel. Therefore, there will be interesting projects presented to your attention, and this will be the first discussion of our afternoon. <coughs> My name is uh, Vladimir Bandura. I am CEO of uh, Analytics Group, and I will be moderating this panel discussion. Now I'm inviting all of the speakers up on the platform. Alexei, you're welcome. Alexei Sherbatenko, partner on development of IT Enterprise. Alexander Vainalovich, director of the Department of Information Technologies Development at the Starter Company. Sergei Saevich, chief information officer at Interpipe. Alexei Ustenko, a Ukrainian politician and MP. Denis Krasnikov, a counselor and advisor on innovations for the state, Ukrabaranprom <laughs> concern. And Rastislav Vovk is uh, the head of the supervisory board and the co-owner of Karma Tech Company. First of all, Rastislav, I would like to ask you, as a follow-up to our previous presentations. I don't know if you've ever heard about Karmatech. It's a national leader on producing fodder for animals. And this is a company with global ambitions to become one of the largest companies um, for this production, not only in Ukraine, but in dozens of other countries across the globe, for which reason they are also implementing the project of digital transformation with some very interesting subtleties, because just as we have been speaking, we talked about companies that work big to be, but Carmo Tech works with final users, with uh, consumers. Therefore, Rostislav, there are some significant dif distinctions. And the question to you, what are the peculiarities of your digitization, which challenges you are confronted with, and how are you planning to become a global leader? Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm not going to take much of your time. However, I will share some things about us. Yes, you're right. There are two parts that we are dealing with because we are the producers of MCG producer and we do deal with our end users and consumers. There are two of them. There's a client, the father or the mother of the animal, as we call them, the animal parents, the ones that choose the uh, food, and then the children that consume this food or fodder. Unless the children consume this food, then we will never get this final consumer in the future. Therefore, as I said, we have two or even three parts, as I imagine that after we have seen all of the super wise things presented to our attention, I think that we are still doing our homework and there's still a lot of homework to do. Our plate is full. But let me start about our production. What have we done about our production lines? We have things to compare because we have a factory in Lithuania and two production facilities in Ukraine. So if we compare two identical factories, one of which is in Lithuania and another one in Ukraine, in Lithuania it's completely automated, probably up to 80 to 85 percent with all of the manipulators, with all of the robots in place and the ratio with the same amount of the uh, production that we manufacture, the number of people that we have, the ratio is 3 to 1 if we compare Lithuania to Ukraine. We will definitely do it in Lithuania because I don't believe in the win of uh, low wages or low salaries. We do have this as um, one of the advantage points, but in a couple of years this will be gone and because we are undergo different veterinary veterinarian inspections and some of the most fickle stomachs in the world consume our production and produce we cannot afford to make any mistakes in our production lines in our production facilities we cannot afford the mistakes of producing bad goods therefore automation and robotics is the future therefore there we have savings there we have the guarantees and security of, of the final product second point we had a problem that we were confronted with in Ukraine. It's the supply chain. It's something that I also refer to 
pr to production. We had a lot of warehouses uh, with our distributors. In one of the, in one of our suppliers, we had overstocks. Whereas in other regions, in our the were stocks, we were out of stocks. So uh, the power of production was not sufficient at times. Therefore, we had the system of replenishment in place. R plus. We invited consultants, and basically we built the supply chain to the point that what, what have we done in fact we don't have warehouses of the responsible keeping so-called but we have to ensure that our partners and distributors have the necessary stock no such warehouses is not there anymore no more such stocks the 120 people that we that work together with us across ukraine do not send any kinds of respect uh, requests to our logistics experts but we ourselves looking at different buffers for per every product that we have every product is bufferized and this buffer on the screen with the distributor gets replenished every day additionally in addition to improving our services dramatically we have also gained about a hundred thousand million um, it's just because we are growing every year year on year and oh wonder we have now 10 percent of freed capacities in our manufacturing lines because we started to work efficiently we are planning ahead instead of uh, extinguishing fires so to say the next stage of our predictive planning it's 18 months ahead my uh, procurers and my producers want to find out how much the company will be able to produce in 18 months in order to contract grains, uh, raw materials, building of new working shops, new manufacturing facilities, where to build them logistically in a, in a appropriate, in a proper um, logistical way. So this is the digitization of production. Our next point is the brands, where we are creating an ecosystem. Once again, I'm not going to delve much into it, but I believe that we are just at the inception point. The order of foods is not something that our customers are interested in. They want us to stay with them for life as a partner for, to their animals. Right from the very early conception, when the people want to take care of someone, this is their initial idea, and all the way through to the end of this animal's life. That is to say that we will be building this ecosystem we're beginning to invest in startups that also collect a huge database about animals and we are also partners with veterinarian clinics and, and we swap and exchange information with them in order to understand what sicknesses and illnesses animals have in order to ensure the proper cure for these sicknesses with the help of our forders we are partnering with the companies where we can go directly to these people and communicate with them and do different surveys concerning what suits them and what doesn't so we will be building up to our brand something that we refer to as an uh, ecosystem we will not be just a forder producer and eventually this is our people the, our team that we are working with in, in fact all of the digitalization that we are working with well we are referring to it as uh, digitalization previously it was automation but now talking about digitization we are at the stage when we're unfortunately get bogged down because the company has grown we are not a startup anymore we are 18 years old we are 1200 people we are the fifth in the world in the speed of development in our market we are rank 61 in the size of our company amongst pet food producers who are more than a thousand and I'm beginning to feel that we get pogged down we are stuck in a rut uh, well in IT I just refer to it commonly simply and plainly as IT because technically minded technically savvy people do not respect these kinds of references but I, un I understand that we unfortunately get bogged down there so I we decided to invite a lot of IT specialists and KPMG did an audit for us and we understood where we are they built a map for us a roadmap concerning the things that we ought to do 
do, and it's impossible to jump into 4.0 without the previously made foundation. So we have chosen, we have opted for the way to move on because we had several options presented to us, the IT specialists that we had to hire, which made for a CTO and the rest of the stuff. However, we found an engineering company, Kyondik company. We are the only Ukrainian company. It's a Ukrainian company. They come from Lviv. They're based in Lviv in the west of Ukraine. And we have partnered with them. We have got them on board as the company which performs the function of our digital transformation office. We did not employ special people for us. I don't know whether we would be able to afford it in terms of the payroll. We are based in Lviv too. And keeping an individual as an IT specialist for more than one month and make sure that many other companies will not demand, will not have a demand for this kind of a specialist. It, this cannot be guaranteed. Therefore, we decided to partner with this digital company and we're working currently on, I'm not going to mention chatbots and different analytical things that an analytics department right now is responsible for and then sending it to R&D department on the basis of analytics of which we develop different new products. But the most interesting thing we are busy doing right now, we are employing our people, our managers, because not all of them want to work in the offices, because they are not based in Ukraine. A lot of them are across the whole world, and their number keeps increasing. Every month, I do uh, onboarding for at least 20 people, and we need to create an office for them, for where they are, where they are based, because we take care of animals, and we go with animals to our offices. We have, we, we are a dog-friendly company. Now this job follows people, whether they are in Croatia at the seaside and they have to submit reports or do some sales. I'm not pointing your direction, but in another direction, sorry. Or if we have to do some other things, basically we are building a, a working office within a smartphone of each and every one of our um, managers, and this office will not be a standardized one. It will be tailor-made for every individual, for every specialist, because all of them are different. And at this point, that's enough from me. Thank you very much for your comment. It's brilliant. These approaches and the results that you have demonstrated. Now I would like to ask Denise. What are your focuses at Okura Banron Prom concerning innovations? How do you work with startups? What's your practice in this respect? Thank you. First of all, I'd like to mention that we have taken a decision to turn our faces as much as we can to innovators and startups because Okura Banron Prom mustn't be a closed off facility where the innovators come and go. Clearly, this is a system that encompasses more than a hundred different enterprises with different levels of management, with different levels of transformations and changes on rolling in there. But this process has been started and it's rolling. These are not only the enterprises that supply various uh, protection for the armed forces of Ukraine. These are also exporters and provision, uh, providers of services. They are not only to do with military, but also with civil sectors. It's, for instance, Mriya that flies and transports cargoes and Ruslan and many other production f turbines for the energy sector, uh, some innovative ones connected with uh, hydrogen, with waste management and some other trends. Respectively, there are some innovations which are generated in our facilities and some of them are really serious and unique. For, a for example, Barakhtar TB2, which are procured from us. Uh, their engines and motors are produced in Ukraine. Uh, besides, in the Ukrainian production facilities, we have uh, powerful um, 
drones, which are even more powerful than Bayraktar, to make sure that Ukrainian equipment is procured from Ukraine, which is strategically important for Ukraine nowadays. Besides, within the system of Okorabaramprom, there are new groups of innovators coming up that uh, innovate and perfect in different kinds of products that we have. Besides, we are open for any other kinds of New developments, our doors are open for both uh, competitions like Sikorsky Challenge, because via the system of Sikorsky Challenge at KPI, quite a number of different developments have been um, brought to life. Some of these drones for and uh, the whole range of solutions for 3D printing, for um, different materials, material studies, and this list may go on and on. And now we are building a system which needs to be as open as we can possibly afford it to make sure that any kind of a scholar, a scientist can come to us, any young specialist can come to us and offer their products. Right now, the delegation of Ukraine, together with the president and the head of Ukrabaran Prom, and the um, head of the Ministry of Digital S Transformation, Mr. Fedorov, they are in the United States at the moment, and they are in communication with other defense industry in enterprises and the Ministry of Energy and the whole range of leaders in the IT area and in cybersecurity sector. All of this will definitely be employed in order to restore and recreate in Ukraine an accelerator. This will be probably a branch, and everything will be under the umbrella of action, action accelerator, defense and industrial um, innovation accelerator, DIA, tech and defense. So we put tech at the top, and in the second place we put defense to make sure that Ukarambaran Prom initiates uh, this process to the best of our ability, but we are open to all of the technical innovations because more often than not, innovations are employed both in uh, defense sector and in technical sector. And defense technologies also go and penetrate civ uh, civil life like the internet and civil and civilian different kinds of technologies can also be employed in defense sector like medical things like uh, material studies, raw material studies, etc. Can I please ask you if you are planning as any kind of an interface where all of this information will be detailed, where there will be some uh, contact details of the people that others would like to contact? Well, beginning with next week, there will be certain meetings held concerning how to create this accelerator physically. It will be present, most likely, in the grounds of KPI. And we decided to take this decision that we need to be as close to the developers as we can. Besides, KPI has a system of cooperation with all polytechnical institutes and academia. It's really close to the Aviation um, academy, academy of Ukraine. In addition, I'd like to mention that the accelerator, which is about to be launched, well, there will be 10 to 15 the most successful projects launched and taken on board. Besides, I believe that we'll be, be work with the Ukrainian Foundation of Startups, Sikorsky Challenge, and some other competitions for the preliminary selection and screening of projects. Now we have already signed a memorandum with the Ukrainian Foundation of Startups, and there will be a separate assessment, a separate line of assessment of technical a value, um, there will be things for safety, cybersecurity, military defense. And now it, you need to submit to the Ukrainian Fund of Startups your application. You'll get the initial investment of 25 to 50 years, thousands of USD. And uh, either via Sikorsky Challenge, which has its own selection uh, mechanism. We have some, I'm also participating on the board of that selection. And then we will be selecting those 15 the best accelerators that we will be assisting for three to six months and then uh, during the demo day uh, attended by the Ukrobron Prom representatives and venture fund the best venture fund representatives and representatives of the NATO 
NATO countries, DARPA agency and some other defense country partner partnering co partnering countries. So two will be selected there. Uh, so the why the defense industry different from other types of industries is that uh, everyone is interested in uh, innovations which are all over the world. We are interested in this type of innovations as well. We are interested in separate productions that are not produced in Ukraine. So we are willing to work with Ukrainian production companies if companies if it, even if what they produce is a little bit more expensive and not as good as we want it to be, but we need it bad. We want to be supplied by Ukrainian supplier and want to have as many Ukrainian suppliers and as many technologies made in Ukraine as possible. Definitely, there's a neighboring country, you know I'm talk what I'm talking about. It doesn't let us get all the necessary technology and material, but other NATO partners of ours not only willing n are not always willing to share with us all the necessary parts spare parts or technology so we need to focus on our scientists on our industry on our production production company and on our students who can produce a lot of good stuff so thank you very much by the way you can raise your hands and you can ask your questions whenever you feel like i would also like to ask alexey you are into industrial parks and has there been any advance has there been any changes what are the plans uh, speaking about the innovative uh, productions thank you very much for your question our team actually when we started and i represent a totally different political generation we're different from those who used to be in the past I'm not going to be talking about politics Alone. Let me tell you this, uh, our country is a land of opportunity and with that num big number of entrepreneurs living here, working here and uh, actually they're not supported by the state. And, uh, but keep in mind, uh, we are becoming leaders in many uh, fields, we got best professionals, unfortunately a lot of them leave for the west and a lot of people left uh, ukraine starting with 2014 and uh, quite often they leave it's not because they uh, paid to not well or well they understand that they will achieve more in the west they will become more successful career-wise we've got lots of fossil fuels and we've got lots of uh, other advantages logistic opportunities that other neighboring countries of ours do not have that's why one of this one of the important things that we have to develop are industrial parks they are there are about 20 industrial parks in Ma Macedonia in Slovenia in Istanbul this is so much popular in Europe but when you come to Ukraine or when you meet some entrepreneurs in the regions of Ukraine far from the capital and you realize that uh, sometimes there's no uh, natural gas and uh, there's a company that had been asking to be connected to the electricity grid for four years how come that the local official keep on hampering the development of the company because you are ruining the lives of the people who will eventually one day may vote for you but local officials they you know work live only one day they don't care about the future so i think that um we exist in different uh, in universes. We understand something, they don't understand something. Like in the past, for example, as a business person, I know that it's so much important to have the communication channel also always open and willing to communicate with anyone. So the more ideas the younger generations got, we may we don't know everything we may not know something the better it will be so i'd like this communication be all, channel be always uh, working because the gr that's out there and the access to the power to the authorities unfortunately only big companies have it because they have money to pay to the lobbies to for an mp for former mps and politicians who uh, may find who stay in touch with the current politicians but we need to open everything it should be just like it's in europe if the authorities work as good as our business does i think we would be launching rockets into the space and things would be different and uh, we shouldn't uh, we should take 
advantage of these, these opportunities. And uh, I heard it earlier this morning. There are five to 15 years max to become a strong industrial country because you see the world is uh, we're lagging behind. You know, there are Tesla, there are iPhones, there are robots that will substitute people one day. And uh, quite often during political discussions, there is, uh, there is ideas of changing Ukraine's name to Ukraina Rus. Or whatever so uh, this should be secondary not the, this is not the most important thing the most important should be the fridge that of your employee f filled with good food and uh, each and every person in Ukraine should be happy the beginning of the industrial park the, the law I, I hope we will vote for it in the first session of the Rada starting September the 7 and then tax uh, incentives and we develop it, our committee develops it, and I hope that we will vote these laws as soon as possible, because actually these are the opportunities uh, for our entrepreneurs to b build new factories, to create no new jobs. If you've got more questions, feel free to ask me, and I hope once again that uh, once our meeting is over, we will continue staying in touch, and uh, I, I bet you have lots of ideas, and you will be able to contact me and send them to me, and I will promise you to be lobbyist number one, the lobbyist number one of your good uh, ideas. I don't think we have 10 years. I think we need to speed up if, uh, three to four times uh, if we have Industry 4.0. I think we have 10 years to become a strong, successful uh, country economy in economy so we have a good agriculture we have good metal production we depend immensely on the raw material uh, when the raw material price goes down we are losing when the raw material price goes up our economy is, is improving we need to change this we need to introduce technology we need to, to introduce lots of good stuff the DSCT I'm not sure if you're aware of that uh, this will be a good uh, taxation f uh, that our I for our IT. This will be the first uh, ex uh, experience on the taxes, the capital that's been taken away from the country, because we are aware that we need to uh, impose the tax and uh, uh, revenue ta uh, income taxes also has also got to be paid and. We see that the tax burden is big, according if, com if you compare it to Ukraine to other European countries. But people ask me, why should we invest in Ukraine? I'd rather go and invest into Slovenia. I will be given uh, everything that I need, electricity, and then I will need to, you know, I will not know any local servant because everything is done automatic, and I will feel much more protected there no courts no quotation you can sell whatever you want to so we've got to be a lot more competitive than they do and uh, we will have tax preferences where the state should contribute should provide everything that the company needs and everything should be simple and easy to understand the W reform for example if you build a house or a factory in your life, uh, well, getting a permission is a tough task to accomplish, to get permission to launch the construction. It's very hard to commission what you've built. So those are the things that a lot of uh, startup businessmen stumble upon. They give up and they go to Poland to build a factory in Poland, not in Ukraine. Can I actually add to this discussion, this is good that you're discussing this, but is this a businessman talking or is it an NMP talking? You've said everything. I can actually help you. The Association of Ukrainian Entrepreneurs, 10 requirements. 10 requirements, let's do it. And then we need only one year to accomplish everything. I can compare how things are in Lithuania and how things are in Ukraine. With great pleasure I beg your pardon sorry if I offended you know everything's okay because you wouldn't be criticizing us if our economy had been growing 10 to 15 percent per year and you've been right and uh, with great pleasure let me repeat once again 
the more we stay in touch with each other, communicate with each other, the more we have opportunities to change everything. Lots of things have been done. Something is blocked. A lot is being done. At the very beginning of our political activities, I had no idea that the law can be blocked by ten thousands of amendments. Ten thousands of amendments when is when a law is at the parliament and every amendment should be voted for against and it takes five to six months so, and uh, the session of the parliament is blocked the dsct law was, had the same and the investment nannies had the same so lots of good positive things stumbled upon that problem because you know there is somebody who always says this is not good we need to keep it uh, in the ownership of the state this couldn't be done because if you do this this will be for the good of a certain businessman so uh, good ideas got stuck and there are lots of stuff that do not depend on our um, team but all together if we got together work as one we will we can change a lot let me also make some contribution to the discussion hold on a second the temperature is growing, it's now 37.5 and uh, today we speak about Industry 4.0, about the problems of its implementation, but in the, e in the AU the Industry 0.5 is being implemented at full speed. What's important, uh, it's not the amount to be produced with the digitalization efficiently, better and better, of better quality, but how the person working there feels him or herself, how people who live in the vicinity feel, will feel how to make the business as sustainable as possible. And uh, uh, there are lots of uh, how to overcome COVID uh, environmental challenges and so on and so forth. And I, 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 I hope that those working in this market are aware of all of this. We've spoken about IT with IT people, but the very market is not ready for it. And if there are companies that are willing to switch to the next level of the industrial revolution, I think that our IT sector will secure that transition the fastest possible. And uh, I'd like to take some questions from the audience. Introduce yourself. Uh, please use the microphone. We don't hear the a lady asking because she's not using the microphone. So the question is the uh, how do you use innovation uh, when it, when it comes to the health of your employees? Healthcare question. Frankly speaking, uh, I have no idea. Uh, well, uh, healthcare. We're not. We haven't been working with healthcare. We've been working with the manufacturers of uh, certain medicine. Uh, we probably work. We haven't had any uh, cooperation with healthcare, but. Uh, no, we haven't had any cooperation. Um, some basic stuff, yes, we implemented some basic stuff, stuff like um, some homework, but challenges and technological trends in the healthcare sector, no. A couple of words about the Interpipe. Uh, the healthcare is part of the services provided to the staff, and we have our own clinic and uh, during the COVID we launched a remote service in our clients, our sellers located in other countries outside of Ukraine could actually have a, uh, an internet appointment with the doctor. So, um, and again, it's this is the labor protection computer. We use computer vision. That's a technology that impacts. And uh, in the most recent Sikorsky challenge, Ukrobronprom paid attention to several innovations in healthcare. We're talking about the blood. We're talking about the protection of uh, production of bulletproof vests, and we're talking about the the health of the personnel and some other developments in the field of health care. We are doing our best for that to exist because protecting a human being is directly linked to the health of the worker, of the employee. But let me tell a couple of words. March 2020, April, May, June, July, all the toughest uh, conditions that we had in the country and uh, 
So our company did the following, so other company, many other companies did the same, uh, not in Kiev, neither in Kiev nor in Kharkiv, but it's in Poltava region, in a village. Oxygen concentrators support in, uh, of a hospital with direct investment. And uh, it all happened there, where the people needed it the most, not in Kiev, not in the best, hospitals yes life insurance yes definitely but the most important is the attitude at, at dur during those tough times of the last year and uh, the social pro programs we support people in the villages uh, those who work at the agri companies uh, that who don't live in give but live in the, in the villages we provide special insurance and we care for their uh, labor protection and we also do everything so that they enjoy uh, their leisure time so this is health and well-being department as we call it I like the word well-being because if well-being is okay then health will also be okay so out of what you've heard we do everything and uh, we've helped Lviv and the Lviv region a lot and uh, we keep on testing weekly each and every employee is tested so that there is no uh, so we would like to curb co coronavirus co coronavirus and uh, we've got uh, we, we there are nutritionists uh, work that we employ they develop uh, fodder for the animals so we make our employees attend special classes on nutrition so they never be sick in the future and they feel fine all through their life this is not industry for, for zero maybe this is industry five zero because it's about sustainability now the turn is yours so uh, industry for zero but uh, okay in we make uh, we extract gas, we make drills, and we're in Poltava. This is what we do, making drills. And at the same time, as a hobby, uh, we started uh, investing into e-mobile, e-cars. Uh, those are special recharging stations that we installed. This is, we do it for fun, so to say. You've been talking about the investment and financial nannies, and you've been right saying that... Uh, you know, electricity and water supply sometimes is cut. This is what we had for six months. Only now we actually got into the main engineers of the water supply and energy supply systems. So we need 350 kilowatt. We have three locations and we have 350 kilowatts in one of the locations. They couldn't provide us with 50 kilowatt. And I would like to ask you what is done in this regard when things will change for good because we are talking about changes, we're all aware of the importance and ha how important it is to engage investment, but we run into some stuff that is, you know, banal, we call it. Yes, uh, I, you probably heard about this, I've told this, you, I, I told this the story, a law that is fresh that would resolve this is in existence and I think that it should be written, uh, uh, we, we need to write it with the business people and we need to make it as soon as possible and we need to adopt it as soon as possible and uh, we need to stay in touch with the business circles because again going back to what i said at the very beginning in order to understand all the problems and all the bottlenecks uh, different regions have different bottlenecks and again we need to resolve the issue on a large scale to avoid any problems and uh, there are some issues when some local councils try to block the establishment of uh, uh, different kinds of electricity lines. Sometimes there the are different kinds of issues to do with that. We understand these are some of the private generation companies that they create obstacles. There are also state-owned uh, gener uh, power generation companies where the same obstacles may also arise. With my team, we are trying to work on these issues to call the people in order to vote into effect or at least to submit a law, a draft law that will resolve this issue. understand it's super important because we frequently get these complaints. 
that people can simply not have enough uh, electricity capacity. They're ready to build, but unfortunately no electricity is supplied to these factories. Therefore, of course, leave your contact details with me. I'll get back to you. We'll put our heads together in order to make uh, the right decision in this regard. Any more questions, please? Good afternoon, everyone. Talking about Industry 4.0, the question to those that have already implemented certain solutions. What's next? What are some other challenges you're faced with? What are you going to move on next to? That will be more interesting to hear from you about. Yes, I will take it first because we have already advanced on implementing various projects and Im implementing various standards. We get new opportunities opening up to us because we get to an equalitative level. And if you take a look at that, you see now that we have this, the predictive system for maintenance and repair works. Now we are trying to unify all of these processes within our holding because we've seen the solutions which are suitable for pipes, for um, um, wheels, in terms of approach, they're single, they're uniform, and this results in the synergy effect. When you invest a particular project, pilot project in a particular business, you immediately get the upshot that can be spread to all of the other sectors. And this is our main emphasis of attention. As I have said, we are right now at the stage something that Alexei referred to as doing homework. But with one of our feet, we are already moving along digitalization. And in my presentation, the technological maintenance and repair works, this was just the first step in the whole range of steps that will need to be taken. So first, next, we will have to implement how AI will enable us to forestall and predict maybe some of the cases of um, outliers, anomalies, so how we can avoid and prevent them from happening. Another objective that we can see with the operational department leadership, we need to get this OEE operational efficiency to be able to calculate this operational efficiency for any production facility that we have. We have seven plants, eight elevators, and if you ask us accurately whether we are specifically cons uh, sure if we can calculate OEE until the final percentage. No, we haven't done it yet. So that's something that we have on our plate for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you for your interesting reports. I am Darina Kusharets. I am Rector of uh, AI and Digitization Institution. It's a licensed academia academy in Ukraine. Right now we are man preparing managers of uh, digitalization and when preparing such certified programs we were faced with a question. Right now we are talking about digitalization and its transformation. Right now there's a new position, a CDTO. I'm talking about the person who's in charge of the management of transformational digital transformational processes. So what is the uh, profile of this specialist? What competencies should he or she possess in order to be able to implement the digital transformation we are talking here about? Alex, well, I have been in touch with a lot of CDOs that have been already appointed to their positions and a lot of CDTOs um, companies. I'm not going to allude to anyone's names, but I can tell you honestly, we love working with clients and companies that set very clear goals for themselves, with, regardless of whether it's transformation or digital transformation, because any IT tool, any all of these trends, what are they meant for? They intend to raise capabilities and processes, Im improve them. If we just implement AI, for something, but if it's not impactful on any processes, then it will all down the drain. So any manager and the one who's responsible for digital transformation in towns, cities, in uh, areas, in your enterprises, they have to speak the language of business in the first place. Let me give you one illustration. Who is our favorite customer? Of course, we don't have one. 
all of them are loved equally, but let me give you one of the illustrations. A man comes to our company, a man that we have been in operating with for a long time, and he says, well, we used to to make 250 beds per month, and they say, now we would like to produce two and a half thousand beds, and I think, like, what do IT have to do with that? So that's the request. I think that CDTO also needs to set for himself. He needs to look at the production processes and he needs to say, I need you not just to replace one system for another one or to implement one um, process for another one, but I want to see how these processes will impact all of my business. This is my request. And with that particular customer, we were able to get his production within four months to 16,000 beds. And we did not add any items of additional uh, assets in order to produce those extra beds. So, but any CDTO needs to understand the objectives of the, his business and why particular tools need to be implemented and what uh, results we pursue. I completely support every single word said. Additionally, he needs to be able to speak human language to explain to those who are not digitalized enough to say why it's necessary and what changes that will bring. And another suggestion that I can make to academia and educational facilities, make sure that your students immediately know while they study, when they go for apprenticeships in second, third years of studies, they need to understand where they will be working. Because on the one hand, they prepare a lot of uh, different programmers. On the other hand, when they come to these facilities and organizations, they need to be retrained. And companies want to hire employees, but they are not prepared. You need to make sure that you work hand in hand, um, like hand in glove with some of the top companies so that your students are very well equipped and prepared. On my behalf, Ukurabanan Prom, now we are looking for a great number of specialists to fill in our uh, vacancies, managers on information, on innovations, on import uh, substitution. We, these are people that we want to hire and we also offer very good salaries. A couple of words from me. Again, I do support everything that's been said. And last but not least, communicative skills, soft skills. Surprising as it may be, sometimes people may be brilliant, technically minded, or people that find themselves in a business, they're business savvy, but they cannot communicate. You just want to shout to them, learn how to communicate, manager to manager, manager to employee. This should be the level of C for the manager, but uh, a chief digital officer that speaks the language of business and the language of IT. And they need to be able to communicate. That's the key. And something from me. This individual has to be able to see the project through. Because on the one hand, you can just launch a project. But on the other hand, you need to see it through. You need to unite them into a team. And most important, uh, not just to see it through, but also employ the results, the upshots of this project implemented. So you need to become um, a conducive individual for all of the innovations. And you need to, to communicate all of that in a language that's approachable and easy to understand. And in summary, you also need to have an acting, acting lesson, because all of this is pretty much like the theater. Communication is something that you really learn within a theater. We cannot hear the comments from the audience. The microphone isn't being used. Возьмите, пожалуйста, микрофон. People are ignoring. There is no cure for that. You need to look at the level of the majority of the company, the necessity to involve, to get involved in the life of the business and the trends and to use the benchmarks which are available in the sectors and different within the business companies or come up with some of the trends that will be driving businesses from within. Let me give also uh, my insight. Chief Digital Officer is like a Chief Financial Officer or Chief Information Officer. Is someone who, just as you said it justly, 
when describing managerial skills, all of these C's, I'm not even talking about the chief executive officer, all of them can be interchangeable. Even if you talk a chief and digital officer in his knowledge of IT or business, he can replace these officers. So all of these skills, additionally, certain technical language, which chief financial officer will probably be able to use to a lesser extent, but just the language. And another illustration, at one point we had a developer uh, in one confectionery factory uh, when they were implementing a project. According to the results of that implementation a year later, he became a representative of the finance, financial department, the fi chief financial officer in a couple of years. He became uh, the uh, CEO and then he became the representative of all of the shareholders in a couple of years. So he knew how everything was happening in different sectors. He knew the points of pain. So he knew how to apply and reapply different things. So globally speaking, it's hard to say if you only know how to use AI, digital twin, do how how to do basic things is not the main criterion of uh, success you need to know the tasks and uh, see the approaches to resolve these um, to how to troubleshoot hello thank you for your presentations my name is Jigera I'm from Kazakhstan Tele uh, Trans Telecom company the question is for Alex we are implementing a lot of startups in quasi and state companies Mainly we have large quasi-state companies, but the implementation takes up a lot of time, two to three years sometimes to implement a certain platform and uh, provide automation. The question is how it can be accelerated, because we have drop boxes, for instance, and how to do this adaptation in a way that the employees within the companies begin to use the drop boxes themselves, it becomes popular with them and then it reaches all the way to managers and directors. Another question, whether it's worth working with companies that don't feel much hurt or pain, they always have a lot of money, they always have this cushion. At Interpipe, that you did have this point of pain, you lost your market, therefore you had to readjust Netflix, if we look at that, Apple, Amazon, they act just like that. Let me put it this way, firstly, our objective when we work with different companies, because we have companies that are state-owned, or the companies that have top managers, that have to deal with some employees or are commercial directors that they want to pursue something. But if we work with a company that cannot even formulate where they are headed, then we as this company that has been through all of these stages, so honestly speaking, when we begin to work with the majority of businesses, we know where they will be headed to at the end because we have implemented dozens and hundreds of such projects. And when we come to a plant or a factory or a field of upshot, they will have to guarantee in order to implement the particular process. So when we begin our preliminary work, they say, this is our point of pain and we only understand where they need to be pricked, but the injury itself and the whole wound will be identified once, once we have been in cooperation with them. In answer to your first question concerning the involvement with your teams, how it can be expedited, once again, from my experience, certainly we are not launching some solutions in terms of communicating with robots, AIs, or um, uh, special pieces of machinery, people make decisions. This has to be a qualitative team of performers, people who have been through dozens of projects. So first, it's up to teams, execution, and second one, it's the customer. And we have two criteria. First, we always look for a business owner who will be responsible for that, who will be driving the innovation. And given the driver, we're beginning to shake the team if it's too inert. Secondly, 
we like to come to the chief executive officer's office and see if there is no large plasma fixed on the wall. We say, look, one of our results, just get ready. Four or five months from now, get yourselves a plasma screen because there will be some data, uh, some of the factors that you will have to see there on the screen. We will have to involve the managers because as soon as these managers begin to see different kinds of uh, factors, they want to ask a lot of questions. So the involvement of some of these leaders is generated. Another brief example to give you. Can I name the companies I work with? Okay, certainly we can. Ukrposhta, Ukrainian post office. We have just signed a big project with them. In April, we launched this project. And three months from that, three or four months with that, we launched three sub-projects. We, we said it was unrealistic because it, we said dozens of thousands, 80,000 people working for the company, two, three years, and they said, we are ready to transform. All of the companies say, we are ready. We needed to have done it yesterday. And we say, oh, yeah, 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 you are ready. We are really incredulous. But it's true that only 120 to 150 people on their behalf work. And sometimes in the morning, they ask them questions. Financial officer have special meetings in the mornings and the afternoons. The chief executive officer also holds special meetings twice a week. So they're really speeding up the process. They're targeting processes. So there are some success stories within the companies, even giant ones like telecom you mentioned. It's also a success story. But what matters is the core among the people that are driving the acceleration and the transformation uh, within their own companies. Besides, uh, what about our time? We should have finished a long time ago. Dear colleagues, we need to finish because in some 20 minutes we are inviting you for a data science track, the next section. Then the final summary <laughs> sentence, just make a one sentence. Some people need to be excused because they have a ser serious meeting to attend. So tell, a so tell us a few words before you leave. A couple of sentences from each of you and let's just wrap it up. A couple of words. Why industry ze for zero? Because these are capabilities not only for people, for businesses, but for people. In fact, the development is not only for IT, uh, but also for the competencies of employees. And that's fantastic opportunities for the companies and the capacities for the employees working for these companies. Thank you. Because that enables you to resolve two things. First, it will result in savings for a company. Secondly, it will make the company working, for the people working for you happy. I will probably repeat it globally. You need to know the objective, what for you are pursuing it. And of course, follow the most contemporary state of the art tools. So of course, these instruments have to be on the top shelf. If you look at other markets, China, the United States, just follow their trends read a couple of cool magazines, I don't know, listen to some very nice consultants and set yourself some objectives and goals. And given that, of course, we have been sharing uh, with you about z industry for zero and it's, this is real hype and you need to follow it. That's it. You know, I believe that the audience that we have gathered together, for them, industry for zero is not even a question. They don't see another option. We only have to keep going and see solutions, find solutions in our particular fields. And uh, success will definitely have to do with information, with um, some of the global trends, some of the global challenges, and the ability to troubleshoot for that. Yaroslav, I don't believe that we have to convince people why industry for zero or digitalization. For me, I just make a conclusion. This is all about constant improvement, and the key words are constant and improvement. It's not something that needs to be done on a single occasion, and that's it. It's also about competitiveness, generally speaking, for the future. And it's about globalization, globality. If you feel OK to be a small company, a small store, a small entrepreneur, probably you don't need to digitize that much. But if you do care about the future, if you think about sustainability, if we, like a family business, want to pass on this business to our second and third generation, then it's impossible to exist without it. Now, Alex.
uh, powerful com co co company that competes. We're all here to make our country better and uh, those who implement new technology. All these technologies will change our country, the standards of living of everyone. Let's be part of these of these changes. Let's wrap up with this. Thank you very much. Thank you.